Hello wrestling fans, on behalf of the Hannibal TV, I am Steven Stonebreaker and have we got a treat for you. A Canadian high school duel meet. The Kareen Wilson Wildcats take on the Sir Will Lancers and the Canterbury Chargers. For those of you unfamiliar with Canadian high school wrestling, duel meets are few and far between. Unlike the United States where high school teams have a series of duels scattered amongst a handful of tournaments per season, Canada is just the opposite. Most teams only participate in tournaments, and for those that do participate in duels, there's only a couple per season. This is the fourth year that Kareen Wilson will host the Clash in the Cafe duel, and as you can tell by looking at the size of the crowd and hearing their enthusiasm, it has grown to be a very popular event. Kareen Wilson has not only helped to grow the sport of wrestling in their own community, but have helped to grow wrestling throughout all of Ottawa. Throughout the 80s and 90s, the Wildcats had very small teams consisting of three to five wrestlers. When Devin Hannibal Nicholson captured a gold medal at the Provincials in grade 12, he was the only member of the wrestling team. Today, to give you an idea of how much wrestling has grown at Kareen Wilson, there are 60 kids on the team, 40 boys and 20 girls. The Kareen Wilson Wildcats are coached by Guy McDougall and Jason Kirby, former two-time university champion from Manitoba. The Canterbury Chargers are coached by Mark Gripless, and the Sir Will Lancers are coached by Simon Fraser, All-American, and current children's author Kevin Stemp. Without further ado, let's get to the action. Right, I'm here with Guy McDougall, who is the head coach of the Cream Wilson Wildcats wrestling team and the organizer of tonight's events. Uh, what made you put this together? Uh, just really looking for an opportunity to uh, celebrate the sport of wrestling and bring some exposure to a wonderful sport. And you used to be a wrestler yourself at this school, and so was I. Obviously, we crossed paths a little bit, different weight classes. Um, what do you think about the dramatic change in the popularity of wrestling and the quality of wrestling here? I think that Ottawa's done a really good job of really starting to build on the foundation that they once had. When you and I were wrestling, uh, it was a little bit smaller, but I think we're starting to uh, gain some momentum especially when you see different uh, exposure of fighting with uh, UFC and other types of, uh, of disciplines. So it's really exciting to see how it's growing and how it's building. And this is part of what we're trying to do here, uh, is build the sport of wrestling again. What's your key to success? Uh, well, Jason Kirby and myself, uh, we co-lead this team. And Jason really works on the technical aspect. And my strength comes into uh, basically recruiting and bringing new people and saying, try something new, give it a try. Uh, you maybe haven't had success in another sport, well, we'd like to take you in and maybe learn some skills you might be to transfer into another passion that you're once delivering. And I think uh, making it fun and enjoyable has been a, a huge success to uh, why we're doing so well on the mat here at Kareen Wilson. And is there anyone in particular that we should look out for tonight? Uh, I think we have a couple of good wrestlers. Uh, Terrence Stewart uh, has been with us for a few years. Davis Skippen is another great wrestler. Um, and then uh, we also have uh, Milena Zagumas and uh, Maeve Stinson O'Gorman. I, I think there'll be uh, some fantastic uh, wrestlers to keep their, our eyes on for sure. And finally, uh, what's your prediction for tonight? Who's going to take it? Well, I'm going to have to go with Kareen Wilson. I think uh, I think we're a pretty powerful uh, team, so I think we'll uh, I think we'll take it tonight. So our first match of the evening will be between. Kiera Wilson of Carney Wilson in the blue singlet versus John Cerez of Canterbury in the red singlet at 44 kilos in the girls division match. Now before I push play, something I would like all of our American fans to be well aware of is that in Canada, a lot of times a wrestler's first exposure to wrestling will be in grade 9, where we in the United States often see wrestlers get started as soon as they're out of diapers. Generally in Canada, while there are a few junior highs that do have wrestling programs, for the most part, you don't get kids started in wrestling in Canada until they're in high school. So for a lot of these kids, this may be one of their very first uh, wrestling matches. It very well could be their very first wrestling match. So do keep that in mind as we watch the action. So push play here. Both girls going to shake hands with the referee, going to shake hands with each other. Now the action has started. Nice double eight take down there by Kiera Wilson. Gonna get a five point move out of that. So we got a five zero lead for Wilson over Cerez. Both girls back on their feet now. Definitely gotta give Cerez 
credit, she is very aggressive. She doesn't quite yet have the technique down, but she is trying. Oh, almost had a takedown there. Not quite. As Wilson's back in for another double-A takedown. This time the referee's going to award two points. No points for the exposure yet. She's going for a leg lace. Can't quite get it. Back on their feet again. Still got a 5-0 lead for Wilson over Serez. Wilson again with a double-A takedown. This time only going to get two points out of that. And I believe she's got another two points for the exposure. It's sort of a, not quite a full leg lace, but she did get her turned over. Definitely got to give Serez credit. Credits. She doesn't quite have the technique down, but she is trying very hard. Has a lot of heart in there. Can't quite get a takedown yet, but she is trying really hard. There we go. There's a four-point takedown for Serez. Referee awards four points. So now got a 5-4 decision. Trying to go for another takedown. This time a snatch single. Can't quite get it. This time it has it in the air. Wilson able to easily fight it off. Serez going for it again as Wilson fights it off. Breaks her down. Perhaps going to go for a lift, but can't quite get it. Bill Carell in reverse lift. We couldn't quite get it. Going to get a takedown anyway. Definitely tell this is uh, one of Serez's first matches. She doesn't quite have the rules of the technique down, but she definitely shows a lot of heart determination. Serez in for another takedown. Going to try for it. Nice job of getting her hips back there with Wilson getting her hips back. Front headlock referee is going to now ask both wrestlers to go to the corner. Nice display of sportsmanship by both girls. Going back in. This is period number two. We go back to the center of the mat. Another nice display of sportsmanship by both girls. Serez again on the attack. Wilson able to go over. Just kind of inventing her own little take down there. Another five point move. We now got a the referee's going to stop the match. We have a superior decision. A 15 to 4 victory for Kiara Wilson over John Serez. Now keep in mind the Canterbury and Sir Will high schools have combined together to take on uh, Kareen Wilson. And there will be no, like in the, here in the United States when we have victories like pinfalls and and they're worth six points and technical falls can be worth four or five depending on whether you got back points or not major decisions superior decisions in the united states are worth four points and a regular decision is worth uh three points uh here in the united states when we have our duels in canada uh it's just based on who who wins more matches so do keep in mind that uh kareen wilson will be as as one team as canterbury and sir will have joined up together and will combine their uh, team wins versus Kareen Wilson. All right, ready for match number two. Going to be Kaya Vardin of Kareen Wilson taking on Layla Seed Desai of Canterbury. Vardin in the blue singlet and Desai in the black singlet. Vardin going in a nice shot there, fighting it off. Vardin doing a nice job of trying to fight, though. Who's going to come out on top here? It'll be Vardin. Nice going, almost had a half Nelson there. All that action, only going to get two points out of that, though. Very surprised that was only a two-point move there. Surprised referee didn't award more points. It was back exposure. Both girls now hand-fighting, looking for an opportunity. Both trying to stay in good position. Barden definitely being the attacker here. Another nice, nice single going back for a trip. Another two-point takedown, but Desai right back up on her feet. This time going for a headlock isn't quite in, quite enough in good position to get any points out of it. Going to get another referee going to gonna wait for, gotta pop, like in American wrestling, got to pop your head out there. It's still a 4-0 lead for Varden over Desai. Varden doing a good job. Oh, there, there we go. Varden doing a good job of getting her head out. Another two points, got a 6-0 lead. Desai keeps on going back for that headlock, but it's actually costing her. No points awarded. Going for a leg lace, and there it is. Gonna go. There's the exposure right there with the leg lace. Another two points going to stop the match. This time we have another superior decision for Kareen Wilson's Barden over K. 
Canterbury's Desai 10-0 superior decision at Technical Fall. Our next match of the evening will be our first match in the men's division between Cooper Morgan of Kareen, Kareen Wilson taking on Ethan Campbell of Canterbury. Campbell in the red singlet, Morgan in the blue. Both wrestlers sizing each other up as they circle. Nice shot attempt there. Campbell going in for a takedown. Originally I thought he was going to go for a high crotch. It's going to be more of a, more of a single leg takedown. Both wrestlers fighting for position. And there will be the takedown there. A four point takedown for Campbell. First time Canterbury's taken a lead tonight with a 4-0 lead for Ethan Campbell over Cooper Morgan. Morgan back on his feet. Both wrestlers back on their feet again. Neither one able to get the other one out of position. There's another shot there by Campbell. Another single leg attempt. Can't quite get his hips underneath him to, get, to gain control for the takedown. But he's going to keep on fighting anyway. Morgan doing a good job of getting him down on the mat. Needs to stuff the head. Not quite. Neither wrestler able to capitalize the position that they are as referee tells them to continue the action. Morgan stuff in the head. I thought perhaps he was going to go for a spladle or some other sort of move. Referee going to stop the action. Going to have both wrestlers back on their feet. Still got a 4-0 lead for Campbell over Morgan. A little bit of hand fighting right now between both wrestlers. Neither one of them able to establish inside control. Both wrestlers still hand fighting. Morgan going through a half shot attempt. There's Campbell in again on the leg. Lifting it up. Can't quite get in position though. Maybe going for a push out here. Not quite. And there's another takedown. This time referee's going to award two points. Got a 6-0 lead now for Campbell over Morgan. Campbell of Canterbury. Morgan of Green Wilson. Got his arm trapped in there right now. See the wrestler, wrestlers go for much on top tonight. There's a nice shot attempt there by Morgan. Morgan going to get his first takedown of the night. A four-point move, but I think the yep, referee is going to allow it. So now we have a 6-4 to four match between Ethan Campbell of Canterbury and Cooper Morgan of Kareen Wilson as we head into the second period. Both wrestlers going to their corner, getting some good advice from their coaches. Nice display of sportsmanship there by both gentlemen. Campbell... In on another shot there, definitely being the aggressor in this match, and it is paying off for him as he awards another four-point move. This time we're going to have a 10-4 match between Campbell and Morgan. Going for a leg lice, wasn't able to quite get it as Morgan slips out, but he goes right back into another takedown, another single leg takedown, but he, but he got his hips extended. Nice job by Morgan extending the hips of Campbell. Morgan unable to capitalize on it, though. Could be going for exposure right there. To me like he's trying to turn him over, but Campbell doing a nice job of staying on that leg. Campbell just won't surrender, just won't give up this takedown. He keeps on going for it. Perhaps he's going to get another takedown here. Maybe going for a push out. And there it is. There's another two-point takedown. This time we have a 12-4. A 12-4 match for Ethan Campbell of Canterbury over Cooper Morgan of Kareen Wilson. Back on their feet once again. Another takedown will make this a superior decision, a technical decision, technical fall for Campbell if he can get another takedown. In on another shot. Not quite able to get it. Both wrestlers on their feet there. Maybe an opportunity for Morgan to score a takedown here. But Campbell still in on that leg. Morgan doing a good job of stuffing the head right there, trying to trying to get out of the takedown. All he, Ooh, doesn't want to sit on his hips there. There could be another takedown for Campbell. Unable to quite do it. Both these wrestlers, you, another thing you want to notice about these wrestlers, another thing that, it, that gives away they have a bit more experience is they're actually wearing wrestling shoes. Both of them with Asics. Always loved Asics wrestling shoes. I think they're the best wrestling shoes that a, that a wrestler can wear. Almost has another takedown there, but Morgan doing a good job of... Uh, not allowing, not allowing Campbell to get the angle for the takedowns. We're going to have a 12-4 decision for Ethan Campbell of Canterbury over Kareen Wilson's Cooper Morgan. 
Next, we're going to go to an interview with head coach of Canterbury High School, Mark Gripless. Hey, I'm here with Mark Gripless, the Canterbury High School wrestling coach. Uh, how long have you been coaching at Canterbury? Uh, I guess we started in 05, 06, and we've had a team ever since. And, uh, you know, it's uh, definitely a lot of fun, and um, we're really excited for the big event tonight. And this is the first time that we're uh, attending uh, Kareem Wilson's fight night, so a lot of excitement in the air for sure. And for those watching that don't know that are from the States, dual meets are very uncommon in Canada. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think the focus in the last, uh, I guess, maybe couple of decades has been the full day tournaments and just to get all the schools together uh, and, you know, 10, 12 hour tournament during the day. Uh, but, you know, that's been, uh, d that poses its own difficulties and challenges. And so I, um, I know then just in the last two or three years, we, we think that having these uh, evening dual meets, get the public in involved, get the community out, um, and it's actually easier from a school's point of view and um, just to have it in the evening after the school day. So, And it's also shorter, so it's more of an easier spectator sport. Exactly, exactly. In the name of entertainment. And uh, so, I mean, we plan on continuing with the full day wrestling tournaments, but to work in a couple of these during the season as well, definitely a benefit for the wrestlers, most importantly, but gives the chance for the community to, to come check out this great sport. So who on your team should we really be watching tonight? Uh, so we're really excited about uh, one of our first year wrestlers, Fiona Kirby, and uh, she has uh, a, a background and some experience already, and uh, she's kind of emerged as uh, one of the leaders on the team, and so we're excited for Fiona. And, uh, and another one of our wrestlers tonight, our captain, Donovan Forte, and uh, he's been wrestling a couple years, and he's really fun to watch, and I'm sure he'll put on a, a fun show. What do you think about the popularity of both women's wrestling and the amateur level, and it seems like even professional level now, it's more popular than ever? Yeah, well, it's, uh, that definitely doesn't surprise me, and, uh, you know, this is something that um, I think it's, it goes back maybe, uh, I want to say late 90s maybe, where it really st we started to see more and more of it. Uh, but I don't think it's really taken off uh, um, maybe just in the last few years with the success of um, a few Canadian wrestlers, of course. And, uh, you know, Erica Weeb winning the gold medal. And uh, I know that uh, on the pro level, uh, women wrestling, it's like, wow, um, maybe this is taking over from the guys even, or just and how popular it, it's, it's becoming. So. And don't forget Dory Yeats won the, the Pan Am. She's been a training partner of mine. Okay, well definitely want, don't want to forget about her, and obviously... She actually wrestled for Great North Wrestling. Okay, yeah. amazing. Yeah, didn't realize that, so... And your brother has trained me a little bit in boxing. Uh, I'm going to guess that you have a bit of an amateur wrestling or fighting background yourself. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my brother's more of the boxer. I'm more of the wrestler. And when I was in high school, it was eat, breathe, live, everything wrestling. And uh, a lot of that was, um, you know, give a lot of credit to my old coach, who uh, the passion that he had for the sport instilled that, uh, instilled that passion in his wrestlers. And, and so now I'm happy to kind of pass the torch and you know, it's an amazing sport. It's a growing sport, both amateur and pro. And uh, just to be part of the growth is really exciting. And finally, what's your prediction for tonight? Which which team is going to be the most successful out of the three? Well, you know, I got to say Canterbury. Uh, I'm definitely not going to guarantee it, but uh, we got some scrappers. But uh, I know we're in really tough. Kareen Wilson is the powerhouse in Ottawa. Um, we we know we're in tough. So being realistic, uh, you know what, it might just come down to the, the final few matches. <laughs> Our next match of the evening will be at 57 and a half kilos between Kareen Wilson's Jason Hill, who the fans affectionately call the gingerbread man. He'll be taking on Chris Evans in the blue singlet of Canterbury. And a shot, can't quite clear his arm though. Both these guys, oh there's a headlock attempt by the gingerbread man. Not going to get any points out of that. Evans doing a good job of defense on that headlock. No points. A lot of action there, but no points for either wrestler. Gingerbread man trying for a snap down. Wasn't able to quite get it. Evans in on a shot. 
And there will be a push out, I believe, a push out there. Going to have a 1-0 lead for Evans of Canterbury over the gingerbread man of Kareen Wilson. Got a 1-0 lead. And then on a shot there, gingerbread man in on a shot again, but gets his hips extended. It'll be a nice job there. Another two-point takedown there for Evans of Canterbury. Now got a 3-0 lead. And got, getting the exposure on a leg lace. Got a 5-0 lead now. Perhaps going for another one. Not quite sure if he's trying to go for There's a half Nelson attempt perhaps. The gingerbread man doing a good job of fighting it off. Evans staying on in that leg. Surprised referee hasn't called the stalemate quite yet. Asking for both wrestlers more action. There we go. There's a wow. Caught out of position, and Gingerbread Man now has Evans on his back. We see the first fall of the evening. Just kind of caught him out of position there. Trying to get back, squaring up. Doing a nice job, a reverse half there. And there's the fall of Gingerbread Man with the first fall of the evening. Coming back from behind, down 5 0 as Gingerbread Man comes back to defeat Chris Evans of Canterbury in the first fall of the evening. Nice sportsmanship still. Been a lot of great sportsmanship tonight between all three of these teams. Gingerbread Man getting his hand raised as, re as the referee points him in his corner. Zarina Wilson of Kareen Wilson, that's easy to say. Wilson of Wilson taking on Fiona Kirby of Canterbury. Wilson will be in the red singlet and Kirby will be in the blue singlet here at 57 and a half kilos. She's been a leader of the team, a uh, team captain. Definitely there's and boy, you can definitely tell she has more experience than some of the other girls going in there on a double leg takedown. There's her first takedown of the night. Got a two-point lead for Kirby of Canterbury over Wilson of Kareen Wilson. And there's our first gut wrench of the night. Beautiful gut wrench. And gonna go for gut wrench number two, not able to quite get it. Excellent technique. Just went in there, just squeezed the gut and got it around. It's not a it's not a move with a lot of finesse, but boy, does that does that move effective when you hit it right. And Kirby hitting it with impeccable ability there. Got a 4-0 lead for Kirby over Wilson of Kareen Wilson. This time maybe going for a Russian tie, but Wilson able to get out of it. Kirby doing a good job of stuffing the head, staying on that head. Another nice takedown there, just a simple go behind. Got a 6-0 lead, gonna maybe go for another gut wrench. No, this time a Turk! Needs to elevate the leg just a little bit more, gonna not quite get it. Doing a nice job there, trying to elevate, but Wilson doing a good job of keeping her hips on the mat. Able to keep uh, Kirby from scoring on her. Still got a 6-0 lead for Kirby over Wilson and Kareem Wilson. There's a nice shot attempt there. The Kirby able to square up at the end, getting another two points there. This time he got an 8-0 lead for Kirby. Definitely have to give Wilson credit for being the aggressor there. Still being aggressive, still not quite giving up yet. Down 8-0, but still gonna try to score anyway. There's another takedown there, and that'll be the match. A 10-0 lead for Fiona Kirby of Canterbury over Zarina Wilson of Kareen Wilson. Our next match of the evening will be a match between Nicholas Malua, our first chance to see a wrestler from Sir Will tonight, taking on Randina Americoon of Kareen Wilson at 64 kilos in the men's division. Both wrestlers stepping out to the mat right now, shaking hands with the, with the referee and shaking hands with each other. Wrestlers side each other up, and there's a double leg takedown straight to the back by Malua. Malua could get the fall here right off the bat, be the quickest fall of the evening. But Randina Americoon doing a good job of fighting off his back, and that's a five point move right off the bat. And that's gonna have to call that fall. But Americoon doing a good job of staying off his back, trying to fight. And there it is, though, there's the fall. Nicholas Malua coming out with a on fire with a vengeance coming out there. Gonna get the fall. Nice display of sportsmanship there. And there's Malua getting his hand raised. Double leg takedown straight to the back. 
pretty serious aggression. How long have you been coaching the Sir Wilfred Laurier High School team? Uh, this is our fourth year of the team. And you used to go to Sir Will as well, right? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, what motivated you to take over the coaching reins? Uh, well, it's it's a nice transition from being a better competitive athlete to switch to coaching. You still get to stay in the sport, um, and uh, you know when your body is not able to do the things that the, the wrestlers can do, you get to still use your mind and, and help them learn about the sport. It's about giving back to as much as, as anything. For those that uh, don't know, you used to wrestle competitively at. Uh, Simon Fraser, which was part of the NAIA at that time. What are some of your biggest uh, personal amateur accomplishments? Uh, one year I was an All-American. I was uh, placed fourth in the NAIA championships. Um, so that was probably the highlight of my uh, wrestling career in my uh, university days. Oh, it wasn't training me? <laughs> well, that's before university. Training, training you was the high school highlight <laughs> or after, yeah. And uh, who are some of your top competitors competing tonight here against Cree Wilson? Uh, we have a veteran. His name is uh, Henry Lake. He's in grade 12. Uh, he's been wrestling now for three years, so we're hoping to see some good things from him tonight. We've got a couple of novices, Jazz LeCook and Ronan Frey there, and uh, Nicholas Mulala. He's also uh, wrestling tonight, so we're hoping to see our veteran Henry perform as well as our new wrestlers. And we have a lot of Americans watching this channel where dual meets are very common. Why do you think dual meets aren't as popular in Canada? It's very rare. I think uh, wrestling in general down in the United States is, is promoted a lot better maybe than it is perhaps up here in Canada. But with the model we're going to see tonight, we're hoping that um, the dual meet style catches on as well. It's, it's a great way for wrestlers to get one match in uh, in the evening as well as on tournaments. So we're hoping that things like this event tonight will carry over into wrestling in Canada. And which team do you think is going to come out on top tonight? Uh, well, it's definitely going to be a combination of the uh, Sofa Glory Lancers and Canterbury and the Canterbury team. Uh, Korean has a strong team, but I think uh, the combined teams can put it together and win the uh, dual meet event. And you're also an author, and um, that's your side job for, for children's books, which is kind of weird because you teach children how to fight, and then you also write uh, educational books for them. Uh, do you want to tell us about your children's books? Yeah, I have uh, two series uh, that are now published on Amazon. We're going to be heading back to the girls' division here, this time at 61 kilos between Melissa Raymond of Green Wilson and Maeve Stinson of Canterbury. Maybe Stinson in the red singlet, Raymond in the blue singlet. Both girls right now on a tie-up, collar, elbow tie-up. Both fighting for inside control. Looks like both are going for snap-downs, but neither girl is uh, able to capitalize on it. Stinson now with a, trying to go for a front headlock, perhaps. Now has her. Going to try to snap her down to the mat, perhaps, but no. Raymond doing a good job of... Trying to square up her hips, but now Stinson has her down on the mat. Gonna perhaps go for a cradle, but nope, just gonna call it a simple go behind. Trying to throw in a half Nelson there at the end, unable to do so. Stinson now on top, working. Trying to lift the far leg, unable to go for anything. Referee's gonna stop. Got a 2-0 lead for Stinson over Raymond. Both girls back on their feet again. Referee calls for the action to start. Wrist control there, good wrist control there by Stinson. But Raymond trying to fight it off as Stinson goes for a Russian tie. Unable to capitalize on it though. Stinson's really been going after the head of Raymond, trying to go for snap downs. Referee's calling for more action, I believe. It might have been calling Stinson for being over aggressive. I'm not sure what that call was there. Stinson again staying on that head, going for a snap down here. Oh, could be going for a, could be going for a cow catcher or a snake, depending on where you're from in Canada. I'm not sure what they call it, but there it is, straight to the back. Only going to get two points for that. Surprised you know, she only got two points for that takedown. There wasn't any call for the exposure as she took Raymond straight to her back, but she does have a 4-0 lead over Melissa Raymond of Carney Wilson. Stinson trying to go for a gut wrench. Nothing there. Referee calling it back to the center of the mat. Both girls will, will again be on their feet. Raymond unable to make any anything happen offensively yet. It's been all Stinson so far with a 4-0 lead. Got 10 seconds left in the in the period. 
I don't know if either girl will be able to capitalize on it and score. Looks like, looks like not. Although there's a nice shot from Raymond. Did she have enough time? Did she score? Yes, she does. Right at the buzzer. Right at the buzzer. Kareen Wilson's Melissa Raymond ties the match going into the second period. Right at the buzzer, we got a 4-4 match between Mub Stinson of Canterbury and Melissa Raymond of Kareen Wilson. Both girls talking to each other out on the mat right now. Another difference between high school wrestling in Canada and high school wrestling in the United States. I don't know if you'll ever see that in the United States. Both girls having friendly conversations as they head up into the period. Shaking hands again. Period number two starts. We got a 4-4 deadlock between two very aggressive girls. Looks like Raymond could be going for a headlock here, but there's this nice single leg, and we're going to get a push out, I believe. Yes, there it is, a one-point one point push out for Stinson of Canterbury to take a 5-4 lead over Melissa Raymond of Kareen Wilson. Wilson, there Raymond with a nice shot. A two-point takedown there. I, I believe she caught Stinson sleeping, caught her off guard. Now we got a 6-5 match. This is an exciting match between two girls that are that are pretty much equal in terms of technique, strength, and speed. I think that Stinson may be a tad bit stronger than Raymond, but it looks like Raymond's a tad bit quicker than Stinson. Both girls now back in that collar tie-up again. That's where it seems that Stinson seems comfortable. And there's a nice headlock. Set it up. Great technique. Oh, this one ends in a fall, and it's too bad because that was an exciting match. Both Good effort from both girls. Both girls showing good sportsmanship once again. I would have liked to see more out of these two girls as both of them fought very hard. Now we're moving back to the men's division. This time it's 72 kilos. It's going to be Cam Dubeck of Kareen Wilson in the red singlet taking on Patty Maracas of Canterbury in the blue singlet. Maracas is in on a shot right away. But Dubeck doing a good job of getting his hips back. And there's a snake! There's an old cow catcher straight to the back. This one could be over early. Boy, it looked like he had him pinned. Not quite. That's only going to be a 2-0 lead for Dubeck over Maracas. They're going for a gut wrench now. Maracas trying to fight it off, but there it is. There's a two-point gut wrench and a 4-0 lead for Dubeck over Maracas. Both these wrestlers having long hair. I'm not sure if there is a hair rule in Canada for the men's division or not, but if there is, these, these guys got to be pushing it. Both of them... Both of them look like they're from the 1970s, 1980s. The Hart brothers that all wrestled in high school got a similar look to them. Looks like Dubeck could be going for another snake, another cow catcher. But this time, Maracas saw it coming. He's going to fight out of it. Is that going to be a push out there? I'm not sure if the referee's going to award a point for a push out or not. I'm not sure. Camera angle's unable to tell. I can't see the scoreboard. We still have either a... Yep, yep, did award the, did award the push out. So we got a 5-0 lead for Dubeck over Maracas. Maracas still did... Maracas with a nice shot there. But they award the points. They award the points to Dubeck. I'm not sure who had, who initiated the uh, offense there. But referee says that Dubeck did. So we got a 7-0 lead for Dubeck over Maracas. Maracas still fighting hard though. Refuses to give up. Still in on that shot, trying to work up. Could see a takedown there. Referee awarding another two points there. Another two points for a roll through. He has Maracas on his back now with an 11-0 lead. Either way, this match is over, either by technical fall or fall. Maracas could fight off his back, but he's not able to as referee slaps the mat. Cam Beck with a fall over Patty Maracas. So another ween, another ween, another win for Kareen Wilson. In our next match, we're going to be heading back to the girls' division, this time at 83 kilos. Melina Zagornis of Kareen Wilson taking on Emma Aranit of Canterbury. Zagornis will be in the red singlet, Aranit in the blue singlet. For Coach McDougal and Coach Kirby, they say that... Zagumis is one of the hardest working wrestlers on their team. She also plays soccer, is also a rugby player. She's going to go there for a snatch single. Going to take her on it straight down to her back. This one could be over early as well. Referee awarding a four point move. Zagornis going for the fall, can't quite get it. I tell you, the one thing you got to say about these kids as you watch her own it try to fight off her back is they might not have much experience, but what they lack in experience and make up for in heart. 
She just refuses to lose, refuses to get pinned, continues to fight extremely hard to get off of her back. And that's what you want to see in young wrestlers. You see wrestlers go out for the sport, you want to see them fight like mad, even if they're losing. And Zagornis continue to work for the fall, can't quite get it. Trying to clear the head. Continues to go for the fall. Now this time got a little bit better, a little bit better of an angle. Gonna go chest to chest here, and there it is. There's the fall. Zagornis, an experienced senior. With a nice win, nice display of sportsmanship there, a nice pat on the back. Definitely got to say, out of all these guys, they show a tremendous amount of heart, show a tremendous amount of sportsmanship. Nice win there for Sigourney, and another win for Kareen Wilson. I'm with uh, Jason Kirby now, the co-coach of the Kareen Wilson Wildcats wrestling team, and they're in the lead right now. We're at the halfway mark intermission. Uh, how are things going tonight so far? Kids are wrestling well, uh, technique is coming, we have some solid finishes, uh, some good technical superiorities, and uh, a couple of good pins, it was nice to see the kids get on top and really finish from the top, and um, they've only had one loss, so I believe we're up 6-1. to one. The, the last female that won there, that was a pretty impressive victory, uh, can you tell us a bit about her? Yeah, so Melina Zagumas, she's a fourth year senior, has been wrestling with us for quite a while. She also does some rugby and she really finds that the wrestling helps make her rugby that much better. Uh, an ex-soccer player, but just a ton of talent and a hard working young lady. And you're a wrestler yourself, or you were a wrestler, can you tell us about some of your wrestling accomplishments? Yeah, I actually wrestled here at Cream Wilson from uh, I think it was 84 to 89, way back in the day. Uh, won cities, you know, four or five times in a row. Um, second at Provincial, second at OFSA, National Champ and uh, Cadet Division. I had a pretty good run. I got a full scholarship to University of Manitoba, wrestled for Manitoba for five years, National Championship twice, so I've been really lucky in wrestling. And the turnout's pretty impressive tonight. Uh, do you think there should be more dual meets uh, within other schools, not just Crean Wilson, in this uh, region? Kareem Wilson likes to try and model uh, an atmosphere for other schools to, to duplicate to build the sport. So my co-coach Guy and I have been uh, promoting this model. As This is our fourth year, so we've had three other teams in. They've since tried to, to replicate it at their school to enhance the show, to grow the sport. It's a unique opportunity for the kids to wrestle, it's something very special. You can see the atmosphere in the room is amazing. Uh, the kids from our school love it. It's a tradition now. We get a lot of requests for it. We always sell out, make a ton of money. Most importantly, the kids have a great experience and it's a great time for everyone involved. And what are your goals for this year for the team? For this year, we sent 11 kids to OFSA last year, had one kid went right to the final, silver medalist. He's on a full scholarship in Alberta right now. Uh, I'd like to get maybe 12 or 13 kids into uh, the uh, OFSA championship this year at Windsor. Uh, and really what we're, our big goal is to build for Offset 2019, where for the first time ever, uh, my co-coach Guy and I are hosting Offset Wrestling in Ottawa. And that's going to be at a major arena too, isn't it? Yeah, we've actually got confirmation. We've got uh, T the TD Arena uh, down on Bank Street, <clears throat> TD Place, where the 6-7s play. It's going to be in there. It's going to be an amazing facility. If you've seen the spectacle tonight, you're going to see something very similar at the TD Arena in 2019 in March. And not only 67s, but over the years, WWE has come there a lot too, so that's going to be pretty cool to have uh, amateur wrestling there. Um, so what's your prediction for the rest of the night tonight? The rest of the night sees some of the tougher matches in the second half. We've got our team captains wrestling some other team captains. It's going to be really exciting wrestling. It's going to be much closer, I think, than we've seen the first couple of fights go. Uh, where we've had some experienced kids wrestle some rookies. So I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. I'm really hoping our kids are ready and going to pull out some big victories. But gosh, it's a fight. And like you know, Devin, it can go either way. Definitely. And I'm definitely getting the urge to get back in there when you see the atmosphere tonight. Uh, how much do you wish they had something like this when you went to school here? Gosh, when I went to school here, it was like me and four other guys. It was a small program. Uh, you know, we didn't get much exposure. Uh, really, I'm, I'm giving back. All right, so I'm back with uh, Mr. Gripless here, and we're at the intermission. You have one big win so far. Um, what are your plans for the remainder of the evening? Uh, you know, just telling, uh, telling the wrestlers to stay focused and have some fun, you know, not to get... Uh, you know, too too worked up, and you know this this event is just uh, 
you know, it's about the community and putting on a show for the community. So, uh, you know, just continue to have some fun. That was my message to the wrestlers. Do you think the crowds played a role in this at all? Because it's a heavy uh, hometown favorite crowd. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. The, the, the screaming and the cheering for, uh, for the Wildcats. Uh, I'm sure maybe that's uh, affected some of the other wrestlers, my wrestlers and Sir Will. And so, yeah, uh, it, it has an, effa- uh, an effect, an impact. and A rowdy crowd here for sure, but you know what? That's part of the fun. So how many matches do you have left so far? So we, uh, we have four left. Um, you know, we're, we're excited and uh, hoping to pull this thing out. Uh, I know we're, we're playing from behind now, but uh, hopefully we could string together a few wins and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll finish the night on top. Okay, I'm with Tom McCartney, who is the principal of Crean Wilson. This is actually your final year at Crean Wilson. What do you think about the success of tonight's event? I think it's just a great event for uh, building community and school spirit and also helping to launch other wrestling programs that are emerging in the city. And our two guys, uh, Mr. Kirby and Mr. McDougall, are just fabulously passionate about wrestling and have helped it grow to be the largest program in the city. Oh, is it really the largest program in the city now? By participation, by number, it is. They have up to uh, 60 wrestlers, uh, I think about 20 female and about 40 male. And you were telling me off camera that in general this school has is doing very well now in sports. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, we have very competitive teams in, uh, in all sports. We run uh, one of the most comprehensive sporting programs in the city. Uh, 29 out of the 32 sports that are possible, we, we have teams. They're not all competing at the top level, but many of them are and uh, they have good results. Our uh, soccer team in the spring was uh, silver medalists. Our basketball team went to Offsa in the, in the fall and they lost to the eventual champion by a few points, but it's not about the winning. It's about the opportunities to present it for the kids to be active and, and the uh, spirit of the school and the spectators all come out to support one another and it builds, like I say, a great community and, a, and it helps them focus uh, on, their, on their studies and so on. We also, you know, we're, we're also strong academically and we're re- building a really strong arts program. So this is a great comprehensive school for students to, to come. And you mentioned it's not about winning, but back when you were my rugby coach, we actually won the city championships. Uh, how's the rugby program here now? Rugby team is still really competitive. They, uh, we're a smaller school and uh, we have some continuity, a lot of turnover with our ru- rugby program. But again, it's uh, Mr. McDougall is one of the key coaches and that program has always been competitive. Uh, unfortunately not been able to, we've knocked on the door, but we haven't been able to open it yet, so maybe this year. And did you ever think back in the days, maybe 15, 20 years ago when you were teaching here in the past that uh, the wrestling program would develop into what it is now? Uh, No no idea that it would get this large. Devin, I mean, when I was here and you were here, you were the wrestling team. And, and we didn't even have a coach for you, and, uh, but yet you were successful because of your dedication and perseverance and, and went to offs and meddled there. So uh, I have a fond memory of that and, and your presence in the building uh, with uh, rugby also. And this is your last year of uh, teaching. Uh, is there anything you want to accomplish personally as, as your last year of principal here? Uh, no, I don't have any great... A dream or a vision of what I want to leave here. It's it's really about helping support the kids and the teachers and making sure that they are feeling supported and uh, living in, or sorry living and working in a in a place where learning is joyful and that we have fun, but we're pretty serious when we need to be. And I think that I think is the values that we'd like to share and transforming our kids from being students to adults, productive citizens, uh, good community members, good family members, good parents. Uh, Well, that's built into what we do here. And you played football for Queen's University, and you had an exhibition game as one of the Toronto Argonauts in the CFL, which is pretty impressive. What advice do you have uh, for student athletes as far as balancing schoolwork and athletics? 17 days in May was my duration with the Argos. I wouldn't call myself a professional football player, although I had a taste of it. And the taste that I had was not all that pleasant, and I learned that I'm glad that I managed to stay focused in school and get a degree and uh, be able to go into teaching because most of the athletes that I were on the team at that time were not university graduates, and they really didn't have many options if they were not playing football. 
and I wondered what happened to them after their days were done playing because it's a very short-lived experience. Well, thanks for talking to us, and I'm very impressed with uh, what you've built up here, you and your team. Uh, it's not thanks. I won't take the credit. <laughs> it uh, goes to everybody that works here. Our next match is going to be between Josh Price of Kareen Wilson in the blue and Jared Wells of Canterbury in the red singlet. Both wrestlers tying up right now. Going for a shot there. Not quite in on it. Trying again. Needs to get a little bit better position. Canterbury wrestler Jared Wells trying for a takedown right now against Kareen Wilson's Josh Price. Price able to shake it off as they both circle each other. Tried to clear the arms. And there's a shot. Takedown straight to the back. Referee's going to call that a four-point move right there. Nice shot there by Jared Wells of Canterbury. Now working for a half Nelson. Don't see that very often in the international styles of wrestling, but every once in a while we do. And there's another two points for back exposure. We got a 6-0 lead for Jared Wells over Josh Price. Wells now looking to go for another back exposure. Going to get two more points there. Has an 8-0 lead in the half Nelson. Could make it a 10-0 lead. And if it is, surprise referee hasn't stopped the match yet. We got a 10-0 lead, I believe. That's a technical fall. Referee going to call it off. And yes, I believe we have a 10-0 match there. But he's going to allow the action. Nope, not going to allow the action to continue. We got a 10-0 technical fall superior decision for Jared Wells of Canterbury over Josh Price of Kareen Wilson. Our next match of the evening is going to be between Farah Monroe of Kareen Wilson in the black and pink singlet taking on Jasla Cook of Sir Will at 54 kilos in the women's division. Both girls right now trying to go for something. Each Looks like each one of them is trying to get the angle and neither one of them is able to capitalize on doing so. Cook doing a good job of circling as Monroe is trying to get an angle. I'm not sure what technique she's going for. It's a front headlock into a shot. Trying to work the leg up. Oh, nice job there. Going to get a takedown. There's the first two points of the match. Monroe with a 2-0 lead over Cook. Monroe could be going for a leg lace here. Looks like she's trying for something, but Cook doing a good job of, of scooting forward, getting pressure down on the hips to get away from Monroe. The referee calls both girls back to their feet. A bit of reaching there. Neither one. Oh, could be another. There's another nice takedown off of a reshot this time. We got a 4 0 lead for Monroe of Kareen Wilson over Cook of Sir Will. Looks like Monroe may be going for another half. There's another half Nelson attempt, but Cook doing a good job of looking away from it. There will be no score there as the referee brings both girls back to their feet. Looks like Cook could be tiring a little bit, but she's a little bit on the offensive as well. Referee calling for more action. There's another shot there by Monroe. Can she get a third takedown, perhaps? Maybe not. Cook doing a good job of keeping her hips back, trying to get those hips back to prevent Monroe from scoring on her. But Monroe back in on the leg again. Oh, there she cuts off to a double and another two points for Monroe, this time taking a 6-0 lead over Cook. Monroe trying to, looks like she might be going for a gut wrench. Goes over to the other side. Not exactly sure what she was trying for there, but we have a 6-0 lead for Farrah Monroe of Kareen Wilson over Jasla Cook of Sir Will. Cook does look like she is tiring. Monroe looks to be in a little bit better of shape. Cook has yet to score. Monroe in on another shot. Cook doing a good job of stuffing the head. Got a front headlock here. Looks like she might be going for a gator roll, maybe. No, not quite. We got that front headlock. Referee gets both girls back up to their feet. And we are going to be going into the second period. Monroe has a 6-0 lead over Cook as we head into period number two. Both girls shaking hands, showing a good display of, a good display of sportsmanship. Cook definitely on the offensive, just can't quite seem to get anything going her way. Both girls in a tie-up right now, referee calling for more action. Referee's going to stop there. I think he's calling uh, passivity, calling passivity on uh, Monroe. She is playing a little bit defensive right now. She has a 6-0 lead and she is kind of playing defense right now, but... There's another offensive shot by Monroe. She scored off of that takedown 
now three times, but this time she's not going to get it. There's a first points on the board for Cook. Cook of Sir Will now. She was down 6-0. She cuts that lead to four points now, only down 6-2 now. She's going to have to have a couple of turns to win this match. She has a little less than a minute and a half to come back. She's trying, working hard now for a gut wrench. Goes out to the other side. I thought she was going to get it, not quite. Referee calling both girls back up to their feet. She's going to need another couple of takedowns to tie this match up. She's got through proving to herself that she can do it, so she's definitely going to come in to the last minute of this match with a little bit more confidence than she had earlier in the match. But there's Monroe. Oh, I thought Monroe was going to get another takedown. But Cook doing a good job of keeping her hips back, squeezing hard on that front headlock, trying to stuff the head maybe for a go behind. There's a Gator roll attempt, but she didn't have enough momentum, and it's, it's going to allow Monroe to take her straight down. Right to her, right to her back. No exposure points though. We got an eight-two lead now. Extends her lead to eight to two. Trying for a half Nelson, but Cook doing a good job of looking away still. Cook doing a really good job of defending that half Nelson. Both girls back to their feet. Monroe doing a good job of staying in position. Cook on the attack again. Monroe's doing a good job of hand fighting there. But there's another takedown attempt there. Try to get around her, but Cook unable to get around Monroe. 15 seconds left in the match. Are we going to see another score here or not? I'm not sure. She tried for a Gator roll earlier. I think if she would have had a little bit more pressure and momentum, she might have got it. Only five seconds left in this match. Monroe from Kareen Wilson with an 8-2 lead over Cook of Sir Will. And I think that's going to be the end of the match. I don't think we're going to see any more scoring. That's going to be a win. Another win for Kareen Wilson. Farrah Monroe takes an 8-2 decision over Jossa Cook of Sir Will. Our next match, moving back to the men's division, will be at 61 kilos. We're going to see Ronan Free of Sir Will taking on Evan Keenan who the fans are passionately referring to as the Iceman. Nice job there by Free. Uh, Ferrer Free, I'm really sorry about butchering his name, but did a really nice job of defending that headlock straight into a gut wrench, right to the back, getting the exposure right there. Boy, he's taking this one right now, four to zero. Nice job there, it was a nice headlock attempt there by Keenan, and a great job by, by Free of uh, defending it and getting a gut wrench. These guys are both very aggressive. Let's see if uh, Keenan will come back after him again. Almost had the headlock throw, but Free doing a good job of, of uh, getting out of it. Now he's going to go for a headlock attempt of his own, and the same result, unable to get it. Both these guys trying some big risk maneuvers. Fans appreciating these guys going after some exciting moves. And he might get a gut wrench there, and there's a gut wrench there for Keenan. So we got a 4-4 match, almost identical uh, identical uh, headlock throws that, weren't, that were unable to work and both guys going for it. And there's another gut wrench there by Keenan. So he's going to take a 6-4 to four lead over Free in this very exciting match at 61 kilos. He's got a four-point move right there. Fans are excited for this one. The coaches are looking up. Keenan, Keenan's not sure if he got scored on. The coaches are calling it too. Coaches Kirby and uh, coaches Kirby, coach uh, Kirby and, Mc, and McDougal from uh, McDougal, excuse me, from Kareen Wilson, both questioning whether that. And the referee does say referee agrees. Referee is going to agree with the coaches. Boy, you don't. That's another thing you don't see very often in American wrestling. In American wrestling, a co uh, coach questions a referee. It's often a one team deduction. But here in Canada, I guess you are allowed to question the referee. And there's a nice takedown right there again. This time got a 10-5 lead. But, whoa! What a throw there by Free of Sir Will. Boy, both these guys are matched evenly. There's a throw attempt there that did pay off by Free. He's going to get a gut wrench there as well. Referee awarding a two-point gut wrench. We have got ourselves, perhaps, so far, the most competitive match of the night. We got a 10, excuse me, an 11-10 match going on right now. Unbelievable. 21 points scored between the two of these guys. And there is another another gut wrench. I believe that 
Yes, yep, yep, where it was, two and two, we got a uh, 14 to 11 match now. This has been an extremely exciting match between these two competitors. Keenan going for another gut wrench. Is he going to get it? He's working awful hard. Boy, time ran out. He almost had another gut wrench. Both wrestlers going to their respective corners, getting a little more coaching advice as we go into period number two. Nice display of sportsmanship right there by both of these young men. Both of them seem to be in pretty good shape. Doesn't seem like either one's tiring. And there's a beautiful shot. Nice high crotch go behind. Nice high crotch there. Going for a 16 to 11 leaves. Going for another gut wrench. Couldn't quite get it. Doing a good job. But Free doing a good job of defending himself. Referee bringing both wrestlers back up to their feet. Fans are definitely into this one. This is this is a kind of excitement that we need to see more often in amateur wrestling. Both these guys doing a tremendous job of making this match exciting and fun. Free in there on another shot. Gonna get it. He cuts the lead to 16 to 13. 16 to 13 right now in these two competitors. He's gonna be going for a gut wrench. Can't quite get it. Both these guys doing a good job of being offensive and and doing a good job of uh, being defensive. Both of them doing a great job of each. There's another, oh, another nice shot, but a nice block attempt. He's going to maybe be able to go for, oh, takes him straight down to his back. Free's got a hold of that head. He should have let go of it because that's going to cost him big time. That's going to be a four-point four point move altogether. Could cost him. Nope, going to be able to fight off his back. I thought he might get pinned right there, but doing a good job of fighting off his back. Evan Keenan there doing a good job going for a butcher. We'll be calling America a butcher. I'm not sure what they call him in Canada, but he's going to get the fall here. I believe he is. Both shoulders look to be down. Referee looking. There he is. There it is. Calling the fall. Nice job. A nice display of sportsmanship again. Nice job there by both gentlemen. I was hoping this match would go all the way, but it was a 22 to 13 lead when the match uh, did end. So both these guys doing a tremendous job. One of the most exciting matches of the night will be Evan Keenan of Kareem Wilson winning by fall. Moving on to 67 and a half kilos, it'll be Davis Skippin of Kareem Wilson taking on Duncan Shaki of Canterbury. A lot of hand fighting going on in this match thus far, neither one able to capitalize on what they're trying to go for though. Tapping the head. Thought that uh, Skippin might go for a shot, but he didn't there. Skippin there, Skippin in on a shot. Doing a nice job of trying to create the angle. Trying to get an angle now, he's still going for it. The Shaheen doing a good job of uh, trying to square up his hips. And there's gonna be our first points of the evening. Gonna go for a leg lace now too. He might have it. Certainly is trying for it, but Shaheen doing a good job of pressuring down. But there's a turn right there. We got a 4-0 lead now for skipping a Kareem Wilson over Shaheen of Canterbury. Both wrestlers back on their feet now. Neither one able to score there. There's a shot there by Shaheen. He could be going for a headlock maybe. He certainly is trying, but a nice throw there. Beautiful throw. That's going to be a four-point throw. Skippin set that up nicely. He let Shaheen feel that he was in good position, and as soon as he had the opportunity to, he popped his hips and threw him back for a beautiful, beautiful four-point throw. We got an 8-0 lead now for Skippin over Shaheen. Skippin scores another takedown. This will be a technical fall. He just got thrown out on the mat there. I'm not sure what that was. The wrestler able to get anything going quite yet. Out there for a second that Skippin might be going for a for a snake, for a cow catcher, but he was unable to make anything happen. Second period now starts, period number two. Skippin with an 8-0 lead over Shaheen. Mexico boys! Both wrestlers circle each other. Skippin doing a good job of lowering his level, but he's not taking a shot when he does so. Yeah. 
Janine trying to shoot in, but just can't seem to clear the arms in order to get to the legs. There's another shot attempt there, but right down into a low single, doing a low single. Shaheen being the aggressor and Skippin doing a good job of uh, uh, doing a reshot there and getting a 10-0. The score says 8-0. We have actually have a 10-0, another technical fall for Kareen Wilson. Going up to 72 kilos, we have Cam Dubeck of Kareen Wilson taking on Benton Jones of Canterbury. Tie up there by both wrestlers. Oh, nice headlock there attempt, but no points. Sometimes, oh, he does get the point. He is going to get a point for a push out there. It's nice to see when the aggressor gets a point. There's a lot of action sometimes that happens in wrestling, and yet no points will go on the board. But we do have a 1-0 lead, and now a 3-0 lead. Doing a nice job of keeping Dubeck down on the mat. Britton Jones with a 3-0 lead over Cam Dubeck of Kareen Wilson. Almost got him turned there. Sometimes in wrestling, the out of bounds does save you. And it looks like it just got through saving Dubeck from being turned by Jones. Looks like Jones is going for some wrist control. Doing a good job of controlling those wrists, but doesn't seem to want to do anything with them. They're going for a nice shot. There's Jones in on a nice shot. He's going to get it. Going to cut that lead to 3-2. to two. Nice job of clearing the arms and getting the shot. Getting a takedown. we got a 3-2 match now. Both wrestlers back in on that tie-up again. I think, I think that uh, Jones would be going for another throw. He had a really nice throw earlier. Maybe going for another one. And there, there, faked the throw and went into a shot instead. Going to get another two points there. We got a 5 2 match for uh, Benton Jones of Canterbury over Cam Dubeck of Kareem Wilson. Both back on their feet again. Jones definitely more of an upper body wrestler. Seems like Dubeck might do a better job of staying away from the upper body and going after the lower body. He was able to score earlier and on a shot. And there he is on his shot again. But this time, Jones able to capitalize on his shot. I'm going to score another two points for a 7-2 lead over Cam Dubeck of Kareen Wilson. Dubeck thinking about perhaps changing his game plan it seems. Nice display of sportsmanship there. I can't say it enough how impressed I am with these kids. They're fighting hard, they're being aggressive, they're definitely uh, going out there to win the match, but at the same time they're showing a lot of really, really good sportsmanship and I just I have to keep saying that. And there's another headlock! Is he gonna get it? I don't know whether the referee's there's two points there. He didn't quite have the elevation on the throw, but he is going to get the fall. So that'll be a fall for Canterbury's Benton Jones over Cam Dubeck of Kareen Wilson. Looks like, looks like Jones might want to switch over to Greco Roma as much as he likes to throw. Our next match of the evening will be at 77 kilos between Carter Love of Kareem Wilson and Henry Lake of Sir Will. Love in the darker singlet with the white trim and Lake in the red singlet. There's Love in on a shot right there, but Lake doing a good job of defending it. Now Love's got a front headlock. Could be trying to score off of this. Could be going for a, a snake. Unable to get it. Both wrestlers fighting for position. There's Love again for another snake. Can't quite get it. Didn't have quite enough pressure down on the head. Enough torque on the arm. Now both wrestlers back to their feet again. Hand fighting. A lot of hand fighting going on right now between these two grapplers. Neither able to get an angle to get a shot in. Both wrestlers are in the tie-up right now. and There's... Lakin on a shot. Love doing a good job of gonna get a go. I thought he's gonna get a go behind, but Lake refusing to give up that leg. It's a battle of wills right here, right now. Lake trying to pull the leg in. 
Lifts him up in the air. This will be a first takedown. It's going to be a two-point throw or a boom right there. That's a four-point throw right there. Has him on his back, and there's the fall. Take another look straight to the back. Gets those shoulders down. The referee calls a fall. That's a fall for Henry Lake of Sir Will over Carter Love of Kareem Wilson. Our next match will be our final match in the women's division. This one at 77 kilos between Rachel Thomas of Kareem Wilson and the red singlet and Cassidy Richards of Canterbury and the blue singlet. The girls are tying up right now, very aggressive on both parts. And there's Cassidy on a shot, but Thomas doing a great job of defending it. Right over with the half, Nelson straight to the back. We have a 4-0 match right now, a takedown in the exposure. Thomas now going for a leg lace. Could quickly be a 6-0 match if she's able to get this. But Richard's doing a good job of keeping her pressure back. But she's going to get turned anyway, and there's another two points for Thomas. Suddenly we have a 6-0 match. She goes straight over to her back again. This one could be over early. Thomas doing a good job trying to reposition herself. I believe right now the referee gave another two points exposure. We have an 8-0 match for Thomas over Cassidy. Coaches are asking about something right now. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if they didn't agree with the exposure or maybe they thought she should have had more exposure. I'm not sure which coach's form he went to, but we have an 8-0 match right now for Rachel Thomas over Cassidy Richards of Canterbury. And there's another takedown. That'll be the match right there. A technical fall, a superior decision. Thomas seems to be very happy about it. Very happy about it. Good sportsmanship by both girls right now, shaking hands, and Thomas takes a technical fall over Cassidy Richards. Our last match of the evening will be between Terrence Stewart of Kareem Wilson and Donovan Fortin of Sir Will, both wrestlers in the red singlet. Stewart will be the one with the long hair and the beard, and Fortin will be the one with the shorter hair. And there's Fortin in on a nice shot. Could he get it? No, he's not going to. Stewart doing a great job of defending it. Both wrestlers seem to be have difficulty right now in making anything happen seem to be equal in terms of strength and technique. Seems now that both are a little leery of one another. More so wanting the other one to make a mistake so they can capitalize on it than they are wanting to try to initiate the offense themselves. Although Fortin did have a nice shot a little earlier. Referee calling for passivity a little while ago on Stewart, asking him to be more aggressive. And there he, he must have listened because there he is on, on a shot. But 410 doing a great job of defending it. There's another shot attempt there by Stewart. And 410 now has a front headlock. But wow, look at this. Look at this. Stewart in with his own headlock. He's going to throw it over. He has 410 down on his back. This one could be over a lot earlier than I anticipated. And there it is, referee's gonna call the fall. That match could have went either way. Both these guys were equal. I just happened to think that Stewart happened to catch 410 in a headlock. Great sportsmanship by both these guys. I'm gonna say it one more time tonight. Great effort, great sportsmanship by all three teams tonight. That's a win for Terrence Stewart of Kareem Wilson over Donovan Fortin of Sir Will. 10 out of 14 matches, that's an 85% uh, victory percentage. How does it feel? Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad uh, both teams and all, all wrestlers performed today. That was the most important thing that we wanted to see. Good matches and uh, some surprises, but everyone wrestled really well. Yeah, some good, some good sportsmanship and respect on both sides. You know, we had uh, some of our veterans wrestling, some of their less experienced wrestlers. Yeah. I think there was some good sportsmanship and some good uh, ability to work through some technique and not um, really embarrass anyone or make anyone look bad. And how do you feel about the crowd reactions tonight? Uh, I, I was really impressed. Uh, we didn't know what the turnout was going to be. Uh, a lot of students showed up, a lot of parents, uh, and they were excited. I think a lot of them were surprised at the effort that went in by not just the wrestlers, but the volunteers and everyone else in the school. So it was a, it was a great night. It was a great showing, and I'm really happy how the whole thing turned out. Yeah, I think some of the kids that have been here uh, previously, like for the first, second, and third one we had, have come to expect this kind of a show and production. I think tonight was no disappointment. I think with all the volunteers and hard work, 
the staff and students put in to make this experience great for everyone involved really paid off. So where are you guys placed right now in the rankings? Citywide, we're doing pretty well. We're probably in the top three teams. There are some other teams that are quite competitive and working really hard, and they're going to push us hard for a city championship. So I guess your goal this year is cities and next year hosting the uh, provincial championships. I'm guessing you want to take the provincials. Yeah, I, I hope we, uh, we've made some good uh, you know, podium placements in the last couple of years. As long as we continue to make that improvement, Toronto puts out a lot of quality wrestlers. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have a great presence here in Ottawa. Um, we may not take the overall championship title. However, I'd like to have a better performance than we've had in past years. And that has seemed to be the trend over the last couple of years that Ottawa continues to get better and better every year. And you feel the same? Uh, yeah, I think, but I think to add to that, I think it's uh, part of the leadership that, that Guy and I have done in terms of hosting events like this. We work hard to get events in new schools that have never seen wrestling in their school to promote the sport and grow the sport in Ottawa. And with increasing numbers and increased exposure due to the hard work I think that Guy and I have put in to growing the sport, I think the results are paying off in podiums in, in offset provincially and nationally we're starting to see results as well. Now, in your opinions, uh, performance of the night, male and female, from your squad? Oh, performance of the night. I'm not sure. I'm going to maybe pass that over to Jay on a quick one. Who do you think? Uh... I think I think for males, probably uh, the Evan Keenan match certainly stands out wrestling up weight class. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I, I think just because there was a lot of novice, I think that they wrestled well. There was a lot of great performances from many of our wrestlers, both sides, even our... The opposite schools they wrestled well tonight and uh, I think that was uh, an overall uh, great way to finish the finish the day any further comments or is there anywhere we can follow the wrestling team on social media well uh, when we have our city championships uh, maybe we'll uh, take a look at maybe live streaming uh, creating an opportunity uh, so to give some more exposure that's something we haven't done we will be doing that for uh, the provincial championships uh, we will be uh, live streaming that so people at home can watch um, if they're unable to make it down uh, to Lansdowne. That's what we'll be hosting. Uh, but uh, maybe that's something we can look into. Yeah, live streaming is definitely the way it's, it's been the last couple of years in terms of uh, provincials, nationals, and a lot of the international stuff is streamed live as well. Uh, it, it's an area we need to grow in a little bit, yeah. And I personally am wondering, when are you going to get on the mat in one of these? Uh, I think I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying this, this new role. I'm enjoying this new role. We get on the mat. We work on the mat with the kids. Uh, I think that's a, a good opportunity for seeing that we still have a little bit of fight in us. Uh, maybe not competing uh, in an actual match, but uh, it's, a, it's, it's definitely a good uh, time to be on the, on the sideline and, and, and work in the corner and, and passing on that uh, experience to on to someone else so that they can continue the love and passion for wrestling. Excellent. Well, I was very impressed with your uh, event tonight. And uh, is there any closing remarks you guys would like to make to close the event off? Uh, I think, like I said, it, it's a fourth year we've done it. Every year gets a little better, a little slicker, a little smoother. We had a double MC tonight. We had the drop down mic again. We had the illuminated board. Um, you know, we had a ton of technical background that's uh, invisible during the production that you would know from your experience in the in the uh, professional circuit, Devon and certainly in the professional UFC events. There's a lot of background stuff that goes into making a, an event smooth. And uh, I think that's also one of our strengths, uh, not only uh, with our staff, but our students supporting the event as well. Yeah, we definitely want to make it uh, an experience for the whole family. Uh, we had young and old here today, uh, and there was a little something for everyone uh, to enjoy the sport that we have. And, and that's the medium, but we had a lot of different extras uh, that it's not just going into a gym and, and watching it there's a the, ri the ring card guys doing the performances between matches yeah just the little details have a little fun not take it too seriously but you know when they're on the mat the wrestlers they definitely take it seriously and they they show that in their performance tonight so it's been great and we look forward to doing it again next year on a personal note i think devin guy and i would like to give you a big shout out and thank you for coming to the event and helping promote uh, amateur wrestling i know it's funny enough we all wrestled here for kareem wilson and it's nice to see uh, other alumni coming back to help support the sport. Well, hopefully when this airs, you'll get new fans and uh, more people will come out to it next year. So thanks for inviting us here. And I was very impressed with you both and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Devin. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Devin. All three schools 
had athletes that def definitely went after it tonight. Showed a lot of heart, a lot of a lot of lot of sportsmanship. I was very impressed in a lot of areas. So thanks to Sir Will and to Canterbury for coming out to Kareen Wilson, and thanks to Kareen Wilson for hosting this awesome event. Hope to see more dual meets like this in Canada for the Hannibal. TV.com. I am Steven Stonebreaker. Hope you enjoyed this event and I look forward to seeing you guys next time.